Hey everybody, Jake here with Trend Spider to go over the weekend video. And this weekend we're going to go over, as always, SPY, QQQ, IWM, and then we're going to do some case studies on Disney, GE, CGC, Tilray, Cron, SDC, and we're also going to go over Delta United Airlines, which is part of that GE case study. So going into the first chart, SPY, we've got the daily on the left, the weekly on the right. And uh, what you can see here is a few different things. We did break through uh, this week, kind of through this uh, previous resistance area that we had uh, shown. And remember, last week, this was uh, right around, where was it? Right around here. Um, and so what we could see is we could see that we were breaking out. And then the rest of the week, uh, Monday through Wednesday, we did have that continuation up pulled back into um, the end of the week just because, you know, we've been on fire. It's it's not necessarily healthy to go from 273 to 295 without any type of healthy pullback. So when we did pull back, notice that we bounced right above this break-even zone. So the one thing about the break-even zone that's interesting is you'll see here that the break-even zone, or we can just call it the point of control, doesn't change if we start the volume profile from the 19th or the uh, capitulation point here on March 23rd. So notice here how I'm easily able to move this anchored volume by price and say, all right, I want to know what the volume profile is since this bottom candle here. And we can see that break even zone is pretty much at the same exact spot. Notice I've also anchored the alpha trends anchored VWAP from this uh, breakout candle that happened on April 6th. And you can see how this has acted as nice support uh, over the last few weeks. And so if we did break down, we've got strong confluence between that area and the break-even zone right here. And when I say the break-even break zone, this is meaning that most people, if the price gets to this area, most people who have bought shares since this March 23rd period are holding around 278, which is where everybody's break-even. If everyone's break-even, it's hard to sell because you can't sell or you can sell, but a lot of people aren't going to want to sell if they're not in profits. So as those people stop selling, maybe those people were initial sellers up in the 290s, but once we're back at 278, they're not selling anymore. That dries up the supply, and then we have a new equilibrium price into um, possibly you know the week ahead into mid-May. Uh, so going into the weekly chart, you can see that you know, this epic – uh, megaphone type pattern here on the weekly is still very much in play. Notice what happened here. The monthly simple moving average, meaning that we're taking that uh, SMA 20 from the monthly chart and overlaying it onto the weekly candles, you can see that this has acted as a hard level of support multiple times in the past. And then uh, once again, it is now acting as resistance here. So uh, kind of going back to the basics, this previous area of support is now acting as resistance, and we'll just have to see what go happens uh, going into the rest of the month. So going into QQQ, we've got a very similar setup here. Uh, we've got the gap above. We've got a few different things to go over. Notice here, if I anchor the volume profile from this February 19th high, we're right in this break-even zone. And if I anchor it from this very bottom on March 23rd, you can see this is also the break-even zone. So um, the buyers and sellers uh, across the board since this February 19th high and since this May 23rd area are pretty much in the same area. So that, to me, tells me that most of the people who were participating here have, you know, we capitulated down here. So all of these people who were initial sellers could be now buyers. So it's important to be able to anchor that volume weight average price and volume by price from different points in time so we can kind of pick up on the status quo since the trend has changed, i.e. this bottom here is when the, the downtrend from February 19th changed. So now we want to measure where are all those shares holding since we bottomed out. And you can see most of the people are holding above. Now, if we saw this big block of shares way down here, let's say that we had a big uh, uh, volume profile instead of up here. It was more like around here. Then we know that there's still a lot of people that are holding at a profit and the price could move further down as selling pressure can continue to mount as those people take profit. Now, once we're here, there, most of the people are breaking even here, so it's harder for the price to drop down below this zone. 
and uh, we'll just have to see what happens into next week. Now, I did want to overlay this weekly, uh, excuse me, I wanted to overlay the monthly SMA onto the weekly chart on the queues to show you guys on SPY, we were hitting the SMA 20 from the monthly as resistance this week. Here, notice the SMA 20 from the monthly is way down here. So you can just see how different uh, the uh, these two you know markets are from each other. Spy is 100% you know at a different level than the Qs are right now as far as technical levels go. So the last one that I want to go into IWM before we jump into some of these case studies. IWM is another cool example of really anchoring that volume by price from this February 20th high. This was a, a day later than uh, SPY. Notice here how this previous area of resistance, which was the Alpha Trends Anchor View app from this point, is now acting as support. And you can see that we also have quite a uh, bounce right off this uh, this demand zone here. So you've got a lot of people holding here, very similar to what we kind of just went over on SPY and the Qs. So I'm um, going to IWM on the weekly. You can see that you know the SMA from the monthly chart is way up here. So you can clearly see that IWM is 100% lagging the market here. Will this be something that you know we can see kind of trying to catch up? You can see here that if we do um, put in that gap snake, turning it on shows that we do have this gap above until around 141. And you can see last week with this big wick, we did try to start to fill it, but we did get rejected pretty hard. So we'll have to just see what happens into next week. But it is cool to see how this is lagging versus uh, SPY and very much the Qs. So going into some of these case studies, I want to go into Disney first. Um, Disney is one that I traded last week. I had pretty much been holding it for a while. And the reason was uh, I wanted to trade the laggard here. This Notice here on SPY, we were just talking about how um, you know the anchored view app was well actually we weren't talking about that so let's go back to SPY real quick and let's anchor the view app from this high you can see that we broke out way back here right on uh, oops remove the wrong one let's do that one more time you can see that we broke out on April 7th through this anchored view app from this high if we go to Disney we didn't break out until t uh, April 28th so notice how much Disney was lagging from this, uh, this February high when we anchored the VWAP. So what I've been doing is I've been looking at the anchored VWAP from a February high, and then I'm looking to see what has broken through that VWAP, what has not, and I'm kind of playing those laggards that are uh, not hitting this VWAP yet. So, um, you know, this is uh, taking us into Tilray and CGC from last week. Uh, you know, last weekend's video, I mentioned that I had entered CGC because uh, it was lagging Tilray. And so on Monday, we had this huge move up on Tilray and CGC. And so, uh, of course, I sold my calls right at open for about 60%, and then they ripped over 200. So, um, you know, that's just the game and options. Just because you sell at a big gain does not mean it can't rip higher, or just because you're up a lot does not mean that your option cannot be worth pretty much zero tomorrow. So um, I trade options, but that's simply just my strategy. Everyone's going to use the platform differently. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm obviously trading um, the option, but I'm doing all the technical analysis on the common stock here. And you can see that we're right back down to this demand zone, pretty much right where we broke out from. We're retesting this area. CGC did have some news after hours, which pushed all of these guys up. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens into next week. Now, I pretty much am playing the same exact thing as I did um, ex on uh, CGC last week, except now I'm playing Cron. So Cron, notice how we really pulled back right into this big demand zone. So if we anchor the VWAP here, you can see that we did break down through this anchored VWAP. But if you look at the after hours, uh, you know, data, it, we are in the uh, 580s after hours, at least over the weekend. We'll see what that is uh, pre-market on Monday. But the point here is the reason why I decided to enter a position is because one, I mean, look at how far we had just dropped in three days. We had four huge red candles, but then we also fell right into 
into this demand zone where supply is going to naturally dry up. So, um, you know, I, I bought over the last two days, I bought one tranche on this candle, one tranche on this candle. So now my average is right around, you know, uh, let's say here. So anytime now the price goes above this red line, I'm making money. Whereas, you know, if you just bought at, let's say this area right here, you, you're not dollar cost averaging in and it, it's, it's harder to uh, make money a little quicker. Now, um, this doesn't mean that the price can't break through this break even zone, but just from a supply and demand uh, force perspective, you know, you've got a lot of demand here, supply and demand kind of uh, at war at this point at this zone. And then uh, we'll just have to see what happens into next week. But I thought that was pretty interesting to see. Notice CGC is very similar here. We've got this, uh, this anchored VWAP from the very top here. Uh, if you anchor the VWAP from this point or this point, it doesn't really matter. You'll see that the point of control is exactly the same. Uh, so to me, that means that you know most of the action that happened happened after this earnings rather than at this point. But either way, you can see that there is still a big hunk of volume up here that is holding. Um, so you know if these people still hold naturally the price could start to magnet up to this area as supply dries up down here. So uh, just a really cool example of you know seeing CGC bounce off this demand zone as well. Previously, this was an area where price was really uh, getting tight and you could see that the supply was drying up and we had this big move up right to the anchored view app from this January 16th high. And then when we pulled back, we had this area act as kind of a cushion below. Um, so uh, remember, demand zone is any time that the price is pretty much at this area or anytime the price is above this area, this is going to act as demand. Anytime you have volume above this area, this is going to act as supply because these are people that are break even here. So let's go to an example, um, kind of a real life example now on uh, the airlines versus something like GE. So what we have here is United Airlines, and if we do Delta, you're going to see a very similar setup. But if we look at these two uh, tickers, United Airlines first, you'll see, you know, last week, this big chunk of volume was sitting here. So you could see that, you know, there were a lot of people starting to accumulate since we bought or since we started the uh, reversal here on February 12th. If we go to Delta, you can see a very similar setup here. You had a lot of your volume holding right here. You had this close on Monday right below the point of control. And then you just had this absolute blast off up to the anchored VWAP. So remember, we were just talking about those leaders versus laggards. And you can see here that this was clearly a laggard, except we did finally um, hit this uh, anchored VWAP from the gap down. Remember, you don't always want to just anchor the VWAP from a reversal. Sometimes if you have a big gap down and then you've got buyers that came in, this was kind of a status quo change for at least a little bit because notice how we did stop bleeding here for a few days before starting the next leg down. And then you can see how well price respected this area um, here as well as the last uh, few days last week. So um, we're pretty much back to where we were, but notice how we had this big explosive move up simply just because you had this kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a volcano building a bunch of pressure. You've just got this pressure that's building and you just got this blast up. You've got a pullback. Now let's go to GE and you can see that we're pretty much at where Delta and um, United were last week. We're pretty much trading right at this point of control. What I've done here is I've just, um, I've anchored the Alpha Trends VWAP just from these important pivot areas. And you can see that, you know, you've got this big ribbon here that's essentially acting as resistance. And so you can see that as the price breaks to the upside, these will naturally be resistance zones above, just like they were for Delta and United Airlines. So in regards to, you know, GE, that was something that I wanted to show. But the last one that I want to go over here is SDC. And this is a really cool example of the price action, you know, respecting this, uh, this um, volume by price here from the, from the IPO. So what you can see is if we anchor the uh, volume by price from this September 9th IPO date, you'll see that, um, you know, 
we, we pretty much went through this huge volume gap here. So you can see that there was a ton of, you know, resist, uh, there's a ton of volume holding right around this 460 to $5 area. But notice what happened here. We didn't have a lot of a Sunday. I don't know why I just typed in Sunday. Uh, let's do volume gap. Um, and then we can go to this zone above and you'll see that you can really, you know, you can see that there was not a lot of volume above until you got to this zone here. So this was a really cool one to see. We put this resistance area here last week and then this week we literally missed it by about uh, 20 cents or so. But you can see here, you know, just from looking at this chart, we literally bounced right into this zone above and then there was a hard pullback. Um, so this is just a cool example of seeing this stuff play out over time. We did have this on the video. Uh, if it wasn't last week, it was the week before. But uh, just cool to see a before and after here. And hopefully this uh, video helped you guys understand the platform a little better, obviously, as well as just uh, getting some new information on the markets. Please remember that we are not advisors. We're not um, anyone telling you to buy or sell anything. These are simply going over different case studies and different charts that you can kind of look at to see how different people as well as, you know, different customers are using this. I personally use the platform like this, but if you go on our Twitter uh, uh, account, you'll see that pretty much everybody is using this platform a little differently. And so we try to share those different charts as much as we can uh, when our customers and our different partners are are posting those charts uh, publicly. So make sure to follow us on Twitter at TrendSpider. Please make sure to subscribe and comment if you like these videos. And uh, we will uh, do another video on cryptocurrency today, just looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, and uh, Litecoin. Maybe we'll throw Ripple in there, but Ripple is just a hard one to do analysis on just because it's so uh, diluted a lot of the time. So um, hopefully this video helped. Once again, please subscribe if you liked it and everyone have a great Saturday night and make sure to check out our podcast tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time uh, through our YouTube channel. Thanks so much.